If you're running performance max campaigns, you understand how tough it can be to get good results. That is why in today's video, I'm going to be sharing 11 tips on how to improve your performance max campaign and get the best results possible. These tips come from my own experience running multiple accounts and spending thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on these performance max campaigns. So I am excited to share these tips with you today. We are not gonna waste any time here, so let's jump right in. Tip number one is to be aware of campaign URL expansion. Now to check your campaign URL expansion settings, simply come into your performance max campaign and then click on the settings right here. From there, you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way down until you get to this additional settings box. From here, you can come through and look at your final URL expansion settings. Now, I'm not recommending that you go through and turn this off. I actually recommend that you keep the URL settings on. What I am suggesting is making sure that you're looking to see where this, where this setting is sending traffic to. The reason I'm saying this is because I've learned from big failures basically is that when this is checked on, it can send traffic anywhere on your website. And I've had experiences where it's sending people to places like the contact page or to a privacy policy page or to a 404 page. And it's essentially wasting a ton of ad spend. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I check to see where the final URL expansion is actually sending traffic to? The answer to that question is Google doesn't give you a great way to see that inside of the platform. The best way that I found is to actually come into here to your Google Analytics. So here we are inside of Google Analytics 4, and this is how you can see where the Performance Max campaign is sending traffic to, which landing pages it's sending people to. Basically, if you come over here to reports and then to acquisition, traffic acquisition, from there, you're gonna wanna change this to session campaigns. And then the secondary dimension, you're gonna wanna search landing pages and put that there. And then finally, I like to do a search of this campaign. So I'm just seeing the data related to the Performance Max. So it contains PMAX. So we're gonna do that, hit enter there. That's going to filter this session campaign to only show us ones that per, that contain that keyword. So now we can go through and look at this, this landing page report to see exactly where this Performance Max campaign is sending traffic to. Now, in this case, these, these pages are all valid ones that I wanna be sending them to, but it's something that you always wanna check, especially when you start a new Performance Max campaign after a week or so, come back and check this. Now, if there are specific pages you don't want your Performance Max campaign to be showing up on, it's as simple as coming here to exclude URLs. You can go through and add either a rule that the URL contains you know, red or whatever it may be, and then add that saying, if the URL contains red, don't show it in my Performance Max campaign, or if the URL is this specific URL, exclude it as well. So that is how you can go through and exclude those URLs if you find ones that you don't want Google to be sending them to. Tip number two is to pay attention to your audience insights. Now this is somewhat of a newer tab that Google has come out with and it is very helpful. Basically, if you come in here to your Performance Max campaign and then into insights, you scroll down, you'll see something like this. What this does is it shows you the audiences that are bringing in the conversions, the clicks, and then the impressions. And the reason why I bring this up as being something really important is because you wanna make sure that whatever audience is bringing in the most conversions, as you can see here, this shopping and enthusiast, you want to make sure that that's the one that's also getting the most in clicks and impressions. You can see inside of this account, if we look at the conversions, shopping enthusiasts, fashion uses, and luxury shoppers are the top three audiences for conversions. But if we look at the click share, um, fashion uses is getting the most, but then we have this woman's apparel and shoes that are getting the most, the, the, the second and third most clicks, but they're not bringing in the conversions. And if we look at the impressions as well, it's kind of the same trend. So what this tells me is that I need to go into my, my audiences and exclude this shoes and women's apparel from this audience because it's not currently converting the way it should be. So in order to do that, we're gonna come over here to the asset groups. From there, you're going to wanna click on this audience signals. And then we're going to click on audience signal signals again. And then from here, you can see we can scroll down and go through and remove this in-market audience for shoes. Now, I will say something to keep in mind is Google will still target people outside of these interests and detailed demographics. So if you have a scenario where there's an audience that you want to remove that is currently taking up a lot of the click share or impression share, unfortunately, there isn't a way for you to go and manually remove that if it's not already in your audiences. You'll just have to wait until Performance Max does its things and hopefully makes those adjustments and changes You know, a week later, a month later, whatever it may be. Tip number three is to look at your asset performance. Go into your asset details and see which ones have low performance and replace those images or videos. And kind of a bonus tip along with that is make sure that you do have a video inside of your Performance Max campaign. If you don't, Google is going to automatically create a video for you using images from your website or images that you provided for the Performance Max. And obviously that is not gonna be uh, an ideal video scenario. So when possible, try to get a video inside of the Performance Max so it's a video that you at least control and not one that is generated by Google based on 
images. Tip number four is to break out your product listing groups by specific products so you can see performance and pause low performing products. And how to break these out is basically if you come in under performance max and then listing groups and then you come to all products, if you click this little pencil and add a subdivision, it will allow you to then go through and add subdivisions for each of the items inside of here. You can go through and do it by item ID, brand, condition. Typically item ID is the one that I like to do, but it depends on how your, your, your feed is set up. From here, you can go through and look at data at how much you're spending on each individual product and then how much your conversion value over cost is, AKA your ROAS and the cost per conversion. So I encourage you to go through and look at this and pause any ones that have a lower ROAS inside of your performance max campaign. In order to do that, all you need to do is come over here and pause, uh, click on this little button here and then pause those ones which are getting a lower conversion value over cost. So typically I'll, I'll flip this over and say, okay, which products are currently getting me the lowest and spending a lot. Tip number five is to optimize your product feed. This goes back to to even smart shopping campaigns or standard shopping campaigns. Make sure you're fixing any disapproved products or warnings inside of your merchant center. You can organize your campaigns with custom labels and then be sure to update product titles, descriptions and images and test different things inside of there as well. Tip number six is to clean up your conversion actions. Go into your tools and settings and go to go to conversions and then go through and make sure that all of the, the conversions that are currently set are ones that should be primary actions or if they should be secondary actions that the algorithm isn't using to optimize the accounts. If you have multiple primary actions like this, the, like in the case of this store, then be sure that you are opt for performance max. You are only optimizing towards the most important goal inside of there. For this account, it is purchases. So in order to do that, you just wanna go over to your campaign settings and you wanna make sure if you come over here to goals, if you have multiple primary goals in your account level, be sure to switch this over to a specific goal setting for website purchases or leads or whatever your objective may be, the most important one for performance max. Tip number seven is to utilize ad schedules. Now, if you come over here to, you're in your performance max campaign, you go to overviews, you'll see that Google gives you top bidding signals. So it will give you an idea of which days and weekends and times that it's bidding higher or lower. You can see here the time after week, weekdays after 4 p.m., this performance max, max campaign is bidding lower. But if you wanted to be even more aggressive or you had better insights to say, oh yes, my customers are not shopping after 4 p.m. So instead of bidding lower, I don't want to show ads during that time at all. You could come over here to your ad schedule and you could set up a complete custom ad schedule to cater to those specific needs. Tip number eight is a tip that I got from one of the Google reps that I work with that has actually been very helpful for a specific account. If you have an account that has products that have varying degrees of margins, like big swings, like maybe one product has a 50% margin, but one has a 20, whatever it may be, or big swings in price. One is uh, one product is $100, but another one is, you know, say $10 thousand dollars, then go through and create separate performance max campaigns for those levels of margin or price. The reasoning behind this is the way that Google targets a person who's going to spend $10,000 versus a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars is going to be drastically different. And so in the, the case of this specific account has made a big difference. Tip number nine is to take advantage of new customer bidding, or at least explore that option. And what that is, is if you come over here to your settings and your performance max, come to customer acquisition, you can see you can bid higher for net new customers essentially. And what you can do here is if you click this option, you say, okay, if they are a brand new customer, I know that they're probably going to be more valuable to my business in the long run because I'll have their email, I'll be able to upsell. I'm willing to pay an additional $40 for this customer. And when you click inside of here, you can you can set a different value if you'd like. And it will also ask you to, to import a list of all customers. Tip number 10 is a little bit of a give me, but it is super important to understand. And that is the strategy of bidding. Going through and testing different bidding strategies, whether it be your target ROAS or going through and doing a max conversions can really make a big impact on the account. Now, personally, I have found with a performance max campaign, when I launch a brand new one, I actually leave the target row as a blank from the very beginning for the first couple of weeks so that the algorithm can start to learn. And then I start to adjust it from that point. But don't be afraid to go through and switch your conversion value bidding strategy to conversions or kind of play around with the strategies there. Just be, be sure you're keeping track of what's working and what's not. Tip number 11 is also a little bit of a gimme, but be sure when you are creating your performance max campaigns that you click on this more assets types, it's kind of hidden here and be sure that you go through and add all of these different extensions into your campaign. It's something that can really improve the click-through rate and the conversions if you're utilizing these options. Of course, not all of these are gonna be applicable to every single business, but if they are applicable to your business, be sure to go through and do each of these. And I do have one final bonus tip that I do wanna share with you. And the reason why it's a bonus tip is because it's not gonna to apply to everybody. This tip applies to you if you have a Google rep assigned to your Google ads account. If you do, go through and ask that Google rep if you can give them negative keywords to add to your Performance Max campaign. Right now, Google reps on the back end can add negative keywords. You can't do it yet inside of your account, but I've been told that feature is gonna be coming soon. So if you have a Google rep, give them your negative keyword list and say, hey, can you upload this into my Performance Max campaign? 
And we have now made it to the end of this list. If you've made it this far, you've clearly gotten some value out of it and I would really appreciate a like. It is completely free and it helps out the channel a lot. And if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in the next video.